We had a very eventful 2023. Let's look forward to 2024. And I guess one thing setting it up is actually what Jay Powell said here just this week at the end of 2023 about the possibility of rate cuts. Boy, he, he really embraced it, if anything. It was pretty incredible, David. I'm not, you know, it was, uh, it was very different than we were uh, literally a couple of weeks ago, certainly in the last meeting. And that was, you know, that was pretty aggressive. I think it is the right direction of travel. You know, if you look at inflation, I mean, six month CPI, core PCE are all trending down aggressively. I mean, we look at numbers over six month moving averages. Service inflation is still a bit sticky, but the averages are coming down well into the twos. Core PCE, we think by January is in the twos. So I think it was the right thing to move it. What was surprising is how fast. I thought there would be a more of a transition to it. Listen, the long term funds rate is two and a half percent. The Fed projections, what they put in that data yesterday, they had real GDP of one and a half, and they have core PC at two and a half. That's pretty normal. I mean, that is, if you said over time, one and a, one and a half growth, two and a half inflation, maybe get two inflation down to two at, at some point, but it's not that far. We've got a funds rate that's five and three eighths percent. That real rate is really high. The Fed has to get rates down, has to start to move them down. I thought they would take a bit of time because of financial conditions, managing financial conditions. I thought they'd take a bit more time, but I think the direction of travel is right, and I think they are moving in a direction that is that is the right thing. By the way, that real rate actually climbs as inflation goes down, right? Correct. So to some extent, they have to come down to just keep the same level of restrictiveness. So, so what Chair Powell said, and he said at the last meeting too, they asked, are you focused on nominal or real rates? And he said it again, he's focused on the real rate of interest. If he's focused on the real rate of interest, definitionally, Inflation's two and a half. You know, you think about over time, the real rate of interest is closer to zero to one, running 3% real rates, too high. He's got to at least get it down 100 basis points, and I think he's got to get it down 200 basis points because growth is slowing. And he talked about you're starting to see more balance in the labor force. Virtually every indicator is showing still solid, but more balance alongside of inflation coming down. So the, the real rate definitionally per the way they've described their focus has to come down. And I, and I think they're going to get started, quite frankly, you know, I think they're going to get started in May, but could they start a little bit earlier if possible? Uh, what does that tell me as an investor? I mean, bonds have had a tough time as those rates went up. Yeah. The bonds really took it on the chin, so to speak. Uh, what does that say for 2024 in terms of bonds? So I'd say one thing, I don't know, I brought a chart. I don't know if you have that chart that shows that there was, we just went through the most extraordinary uh, drawdown on the bond market. So for three years, you had this extraordinary drawdown that was literally a 20% return. And I mean, we were to the point where long bonds were trading. There was one of the long bond trades at 47 and a half cents on the dollar. Nobody thinks AAA Treasuries should trade at 47 and a half cents on the dollar, but they were issued in 20 post COVID. And now they've, they've come under this incredible pressure. So now, I, I, I did this presentation today where I called it that, you know, the only way to make a big splash is you need the diving board to be really high. How does the diving board get really high? It's when losses happen before it and you just build the levels in terms of your upside potential return. I think next year, if you believe, which I believe and the Fed has, has presaged that we are going to start to bring their rate down, you can create a lot of income in portfolios and I think the total return performance is going to be really good. We can we build portfolios today that are still six and a half percent. And by the way, for for in, we're building, we're buying we're buying assets in Europe now, two and three year investment grade European assets. At, as a dollar investor, you're getting at six and a quarter. They were financing at negative interest rates back in 2021. Negative. Now we're at six and a quarter. Listen, I think the return. I mean, I think you can clip six percent, six and a half percent yield that can turn into double digit return. You could get a ten if they bring the rate down. So when people think about their equity debt portfolio, you know, equities just had a really good go. I think there's a huge amount of money sitting in money market funds. It's been very comfortable not losing money in bonds, clipping five and a half percent. That says, oh my God, I may lose the five and a half. I should start, I can start taking advantage of these rates because we're probably not going to get them a year from now. Uh, risk of uh, inflation coming back. That's the concern that maybe yeah. they're backing off too fast. Yeah. And it would come back. It, it, by the way, the CPI numbers we had this week were reasonably sticky. I mean, they were not bad, yeah, but yeah, they were yeah. sticky. So here's why I'm confident. So I'll say one part. Let's start with the sticky part. Service level inflation is hard to bring down. There's a series of things. You know, what drives it? Insurance, hard to bring health care insurance, auto insurance, hard. You know, look at medical services, aging demographic, hard, hard to bring that down. Shelter, we don't build enough houses today. Shelter is hard to bring down. So its services are sticky. 
Is services going to get to 3.5% inflation? I think so. Goods are deflating. The last, last six months, uh, CPI goods inflation is actually negative. But you can be pretty confident supply chain, logistics, technology, you know, getting increasingly more productivity in, in that. You can be pretty confident the goods part of the economy is very stable and will stay low. And services, you know, service economy, service inflation doesn't move, generally doesn't move around, unless you have a pandemic, doesn't move around that much. So you can get comfortable that we can stay in and around, on average, high twos now trending to low twos inflation. But can you blip up a little bit? If you, it's, it's certainly possible. But, you know, I think it's really important. The Fed doesn't really move insurance prices. The Fed doesn't really move health care prices. Those are not cyclical. The Fed should focus on where their influence is, and that's a cyclical part of the economy, which is quite clear in that it's moderating. Let me take the flip side of it. Going into 2023, mm -hmm. there were a lot of economists who were predicting a recession this year. It hasn't happened yet that we're aware of. Uh, given where we are with the Fed right now, have they almost taken that off the table if they are basically are not going to raise any more? So, I mean, I said, I'm at, I'd say one thing, and, I, and uh, you know, I've said it on your show a bunch of times. I really think the U.S. economy doesn't go into recession except for pandemic, financial crisis, unless there's some big exogenous shock. And I'll use one stat. The service, sir, consumption in this economy is 70% services now. In 100 years, there's only been 13 quarters of negative growth in services. And, you know, you think about health care spend, education spend, and the demographic evolution, things spend on experiences versus goods, commodities. It's a very, very different economic paradigm than we've been used to. My sense is that there are some things, you know, you've got some roll off of the savings, you know, the student loan payments that are coming on. There's some things that business capex slowing a bit. My sense is that it's a very stable economy that's migrating slower. But, you know, there's always this discussion about where are we in the cycle. And I just don't think cycles are like they were in a commodity-oriented, energy-driven economy like you saw in the 70s and so where you had big spikes in oil prices. I just think it's really different. And, and so, I don't know, I think you should anticipate a slower economy, but I think people overstate the cyclical nature of it today. Rick, we've been talking about investing in bonds. Let's talk about the other side of your book, equity. Mm -hmm. uh, going into 2024, we're looking at, uh, I would say at least valuations are pretty robust. Mm -hmm. The multiples are pretty uh, up there. Do you anticipate uh, a boost to, to uh, earnings uh, because of what we're seeing right now in the economy? It's a slowing economy, as you just mm -hmm. said. Yeah. At the same time, it looks like interest rates may be coming back down. So, so I'd start with them. And if it, so let's say the first thesis, if the bond market can get you seven, you know, mm -hmm. let's say six, seven percent return next year, pretty good. You know, if you think about what your liabilities are, what your return, pretty good. So if you said, okay, I'm going to take a chunk of my portfolio, put it there. So now what will the equities do? Spectacular returns this year, driven largely by seven stocks. If you strip out the seven and say, okay, what about the other 493 of the S&P 500? I would argue the multiples are not that high. I was looking at energy the other day, 10% free cash flow yield. Pretty good for a lot of these you know, energy, defense, healthcare, you know, a lot of the industrial ecosystem, banks. Like, I think there's enough stocks that so if you take what does the economy do? Economy moderates, but the level of nominal GDP is still really high. My sense is companies traditionally can throw off seven to 11, 12 percent return on equity. If you assume that 493 stocks, your multiple is okay, interest rate comes down and the companies can throw off 10% ROE return on equity, you should be able to get an 8 to 10, 12% return in equities. Certainly, you know, markets can move around. But if you said, gosh, I'm going to look at over a two-year time frame, I feel pretty good about not spectacular returns. And, you know, by the way, if the economy does moderate, you think the discount rate is going to come down alongside of it. So I think it's going to be one of those years, if I can get a lot of income, keep my beta in the equity market. I don't need it in fixed income because quality assets get you yield and income. And then I put it in the equity market. I think you can have a decent return here.